just so buff. We're rolling? Alright. <laughs> Judy says we're rolling. Calvin Castine at the Minor Institute. I want to keep calling this the Minor Farm because when I was a young one, it was the Minor Farm. But is that right? People still call this the Minor Farm? Uh, yeah, people still call it the far Minor Farm. We know what we know what they're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> you don't correct them and say, no, no, no. <laughs> no. <laughs> All right. And who are you? I'm Amy Bedard. I am the librarian and archivist here at Minor Institute. All right. Not that there's anything to archive here at Minor Institute. Oh, no, is not at all. <laughs> <laughs> and who's your cohort? <laughs> Hi, I'm Rachel Dutel, and I do PR and marketing here at Minor Institute. All right. So we're here on October 25th, and very shortly the exhibit uh, season is going to be over here. But before it closed this summer, I was uh, doing some stuff in Altona. Francis Perrier got a hold of me in a, in a McGregor powerhouse. We took a tour through there, and I know you guys were involved and he told me that you know you guys were working back and forth so yes. uh, I said I got to get there got to get there and all of a sudden uh, <laughs> time is up <laughs> but there might be somebody out there who doesn't know what Minor Institute is and yeah, what Minor Farm is and who never even heard of Bill Minor can I call him Bill? Uh, well, I think he's mostly <laughs> called William, but... <laughs> well, I know him as Bill. <laughs> uh, who um, wants to tell us that? I think Rachel. She, uh, she does I, a great job. I knew you would volunteer. Yeah. Her. <laughs> well, she does a great job with it. <laughs> so, um, do you want me to hold sure, this? That seems ahead. like... <laughs> I'll just leave. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, he, Minor Institute... Um, we have a, I guess you would call it a three-piece mission, so research, education, and demonstration. So we are an operational farm. We milk uh, about 400 registered Holsteins every day at our dairy barn. Wait a minute, we? Uh, <laughs> well, we, you Royal know, we work as a we work as a team, so <laughs> okay, <all right>. <laughs> so I can sort of take a little bit of superficial credit for right, it. Although right. I keep yeah. going, I, I won't interrupt you too many times. But. Uh, so we also have a herd of Morgan horses. Um, so we have about um, somewhere between twenty five and thirty Morgan horses here, typically. Um, and we have a host of education programs as well. Most of those are for college undergraduates, um, and they vary from semester. Um, in the fall semester, we have a program with SUNY Plattsburgh in environmental science. Um, in the springtime, we have a dairy management program. Uh, that's a residential program. And in the summer, we offer a series of paid internships for college undergraduates. Um, and then, you know, we have a host of outreach programs for regional farmers as well as the general public. And our main attraction, of course, for the general public is the Heritage Exhibit, which is open seasonally from May through the end of October. All right. So who is William H. Minor? Well, so William Miner um, was a very well-known uh, uh, farmer and uh, railroad inventor um, and certainly a philanthropist of the North Country, um, and he died in 1930, so he hasn't been around for quite a while, but certainly his legacy is pretty lasting. So in addition to Miner Institute, which bears his name. The other organizations that um, really have a lot to do with uh, William Minor are, of course, the Shazy Central Rural School, um, the Alice T. Minor Museum, um, as well as the Champlain Valley Physicians Hospital. And I'm going to just leave it at that because I don't know how to appropriately <laughs> say its new name. <laughs> yeah, UVM, uh, whatever. Yes, uh, yes, because William H. Minor built the first physician's hospital. Champlain sure, Valley was correct. operating separately as a Catholic hospital, and uh, William Minor uh, built the physician's hospital. He built Shazy Central School, and last year they were very happy to celebrate their 100th anniversary. Yeah. The, what, what they think is the first rural school in the country, at least if not the country, it's certainly in New York State. Yeah. So yeah, philanthropist was a certain part of it, and uh, he also did uh, a whole lot for this area with uh, you know, the million dollar dam and, you know, as I said, the McGregor Dam earlier. And, and uh, you know, even though he died uh, <laughs> almost two decades before I came along, uh, uh, the Minor Farm has always been part of my growing up because when I was in my high school days, we would, the northern fields over here, we would field, we would farm those. My father, Carl Castine, mm -hmm. and my uncle, Ronald Castine, and my brothers and I, we would we would farm those fields, and we even farmed one out in the back. But here, we'd you know we did cut the hay and then did all that stuff on mm -hmm. 
and now I'm surrounded by the minor farm. My mm -hmm. brothers <laughs> have sold their land around my family farm, and uh, so my little family farm is now surrounded by the minor farm. <laughs> 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 we're on the Ridge Road. This is the Ridge Road, and we're on the Ridge Road in Champlain. Mm -hmm. So, you know, minor is an important part of us. Anyway, so this museum, uh, uh, one of the things he did was start this Heart's Delight Farm, and this was quite the showcase, and it's in its heyday, wasn't it? It was. It was quite the showcase. Um, very uh, large farm, had three, uh, 300 buildings, uh, 15,000 15, acres at its peak, 800 employees. Um, so he was you know, very innovative doing research and putting in tile drain and all sorts of animals on the farm. So you've got this museum, and this museum is here. When is it open? It Normally. is. It is open uh, the beginning of May through the end of October, um, seasonally. So um, week weekdays mostly, but occasionally on weekends when we have special events. Okay. So and speaking actually of special events, um, this uh, I gave it to you once. Okay. So. Okay. <laughs> uh, so this Saturday we're actually hosting um, a. Day of the Morgan Horse. It's a national event and we'll have um, an event in our horse barn from noon to four. So that's October 28th and our exhibit will be open as part of that. So, okay, so kind of a last chance to yeah. visit for the 2017 season. All right. So all you folks watching this before the 28th, get that exactly. down. If you're watching after down, the 28th, yeah. yes. Sorry. they do the stuff every They do stuff like this every year. So watch. That's right. Yes. right. Now, do you have a website that uh, people can check on if they want to know what events are coming up? Sure, whminer.org, and you can also find us on Facebook. All right, so that's so easy. I'm on Facebook, too. Yeah. Right? <laughs> Anyone on Facebook? Oh, yes. <laughs> Some people live on Facebook. <laughs> that's true. <laughs> okay, so um, we're, we're going to see. Now, normally you've got a normal part uh, that uh, uh, stuff, uh, when this opened up, maybe five, six years ago, when this, when this museum opened up? 2003. <laughs> Five, six years ago. Yes. <laughs> yes. 2003, yes. that's 14 years. Yes, yes. We were a lot younger then, weren't we? <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> Especially you. <laughs> Rachel was still in diapers back then. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> so some of that will still be here because there's a certain part of of the heritage that's got to be there if you're going to tell the minor story. Yes. So the stuff people saw in 2003, a lot of that will still be here. Yes. But every year you do a different exhibit? Well, or? not every year, but no. we, we slowly expanded. Um, in 2006, I believe, we added the coach house, which has vehicles from Hearts Delight Farm, mm -hmm. as well as a school bus from Shazie Central Rural School. Uh, in 2009, we added our 100, uh, 100 years growing theater for a special uh, uh, video about uh, agriculture in the North Country and here at Minor Institute, and to give people who don't necessarily get to go visit our our barns what we do here uh -huh. um, so and this year we've just added a um, hydro exhibit that will stay here for at least a year or two um, so it's uh, that we had we always had a panel for the hydro uh, electric projects that miner had but it's such a big part of what he does um, you know he had electricity in the dairy barn before the governor's mansion so <laughs> it's kind of important to to let people know what he did and uh, some of the projects he he worked on with hydroelectric power. Well, back then they had their priorities right. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so they knew that if you didn't have your morning meal, <laughs> the rest of the stuff didn't matter. So the you know. Yes. But yeah, I I can't imagine when uh, uh, most farmers got uh, electricity in the barn. You know, just uh, mm. you know, you can you just think of all those. Uh, those lanterns and the, mm -hmm. the hay and everything else, the, mm. the danger yeah. it must have been back in a hundred and some odd years ago, the, the average farmer. All right, so are we ready to go inside? Is there anything I else we need to know out here? I think that's it for right now. All right, is that okay with you, Judy? Yeah, she says yes. <laughs> okay. We have stepped inside, and uh, I know from past visits that uh, some of the inventions that uh, William H. Minor is credited with or here and he was a, a prolific inventor when it came to railroad equipment and that's how he made his fortune I and mean, he wasn't one of these guys who just sat on his fortune though and this is a, a little diorama of what the farm looked like in its heyday yes. uh, was it Jim, Jim West who did this or I don't know, who did the diorama uh, well um, it was a 
group effort with um, uh, prisoners from uh, the uh, Altona. Uh -huh. And um, Ardo Monaco also helped out Ardo, from, uh, from the land of make believe. Okay, uh, what, uh, 2000. He died, I think, in 2004. So yes. this was yes, kind and of, uh, just just before his passing. Yes. Yeah. You couldn't have asked for a, a better person to get involved. And I think um, Jim West did the, uh, the house, uh, the, the birdhouse. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yes, birdhouse and the Hearts of White Cottage. All right, so this is what people will see just about every year if they come yes we're making our way toward what is going to be here for uh, next year and maybe the year after uh, the uh, hydro exhibit now are there hours here or can people do people show up on a on a weekday in the summer can they just walk in or what's the story uh hours are generally 9 to 3 p.m um, it's self-guided so they can come for just a few minutes or they can um stay for several hours we we kind of let it lead it left it up to them so uh are they in here on their own you just walk in or should yeah, they yeah. announce that they're here no nope, they're no? here on their own we okay. do do uh guided tours for larger groups um but certainly they're welcome it's also it's free so there's no cost for them to to visit so we get a lot of repeat visitors and some people that come every week every day i think <laughs> every day. <laughs> <laughs> okay <laughs> Must be looking for snacks or something. <laughs> uh, and this is the birdhouse that uh, yes. Jim West built. And that's a replica of the Martin uh, Martin oh, House. That's correct. It's a quarter of the scale. Yeah, it was. <laughs> it was four, <laughs> quarter of the scale, so four or sixteen okay. times whatever yes. bigger than that. And uh, what twenty twenty five feet in the About air? About twenty. Else? It was on a twenty foot pedestal. So. And then you imagine the size of the birdhouse for five hundred purple martins. So. <laughs> <laughs> quite yeah. large yeah if you want to track martins apparently you've got to be up in the air like that but yes. imagine what what that did in the wind you know right <laughs> <laughs> well knowing miner i'm sure it was very well yes, constructed i'm sure and what's this building here that is a model of heart's delight cottage cottage uh, yeah yes <laughs> small 47 rooms <laughs> just, just a little yes. getaway place yeah that was uh did they live there or that's where the guests would that be? that is where they lived um the guests had their own uh harmony hall so this was just for uh william and alice and um and f as i said you know about 47 rooms um i think the most remarkable thing is perhaps that he really uh they were always they each bedroom had their own bathroom and he didn't overlook any of the, those little details it was uh you know again there was electricity in it Full well, staff. When, when his millionaire friends came up to visit, he liked to show them that right. he was uh, <laughs> able to take care of their, their needs, I'm sure. So this is, they would come down into through here, and uh, some of these things you would expect to see at the Alice T. Minor collection. Did uh, any of this stuff come out of the Alice T. Minor Museum? Uh, actually, yeah, the purse uh, did come out of the Alice T. Minor uh, museum and we actually call this the uh, Alice's Corner. Um, it has a birth certificate for their infant son, their marriage certificate. Uh, we have uh, some of William Miner's glasses um, in their their china, some brushes, and uh, one of the guest books. Now their their infant son, did he die as an infant, as a newborn? Or he did. What? He was uh, he lived about two weeks. Um, we're not really sure, uh, considering. A, a large percentage of children uh, passed away in, as infants um, in the early 1900s. It wasn't rare. Right. But that's their only child. That, unfortunately, it was their only child. Okay. And uh, this is turning water into light. Is Mr. Hart got anything to do with that? He was actually an employee um, working at the Altona Flat Rock Dam. Um, and we just, we, we love this image. It shows the hardworking face of the, uh, the, the employees at the dam. Um, he exemplifies, <laughs> exemplifies that very well. An amazing project. Uh, and this is the, the million dollar dam. Uh, this is a, it was a drawing of the million dollar dam um, up in Altona, Flat Rock. That is no longer being used. Um, 
most of that dam is still there. It's, uh, it is still there. Um, and there is a, um, it doesn't hold water anymore. We've, uh, yeah, we have breached. a hole, yeah, we, we, we put a hole in it so the animals can move back and forth freely. Again, that we. We, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I remember seeing you out there with your sledgehammer. <laughs> Well, it's quite a sight. I remember the first time when Bob Ben and I walked out there and saw that sitting mm -hmm. in the middle of the trees. The first time you it's, see it, it's 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 massive and it's in the wilderness. So yes. you don't if you if you don't know what's there, it, it is quite the surprise. Yes, yes. All right. So uh, there's other stuff here along the side, and uh, this is what the this is the exhibit we're talking about right here. This is the exhibit we are talking about. All right. So I'm gonna. Even though it's supposed to be self-guided, I'm going to let you guide me. Sure. So we've tried to cover all the components of uh, what it would be like from the start to the finish of uh, a hydro project. Um, and, well, starting with the visitors, we have Alice visiting with her sisters in Ann Holda. Um, and then we also have a gentleman in a very fancy coat that we could not resist adding to <laughs> to, to show that he, he brought people from everywhere and all walks of uh, life to see his projects. Now, uh, this hydro project, this is to make electricity, right? That's correct. All right. Um, and so before you could actually uh, build the dam, you had to survey the, uh, the land. So he had, uh, some, this is some of the surveying equipment that we've found um, that would have been used. And in the image, you can actually see William Miner with his surveyor. Uh, at, I believe it's Tracy Brook. Okay, and uh, that runs through uh, Lake Alice, as I recall, yes, isn't it? Yes, yeah. yes, and um, that that was a very early image, so that would have been probably, I believe, before Lake Alice was, con uh, yeah. the dams were constructed there. Now, is this an actual uh, surveying equipment that was part of here, or is it just one that would have been used? We are not sure. We recently found it um, during a a remodeling of the farm office uh, considering the age we believe it is <laughs> um, but it's amazing what you people find exactly the, the photos that were dug up uh, exactly yeah just, uh, you know over 5,000 negatives so all these images that are in here are from Hearts Delight Farm uh, but, you know, it's, but it's great that he had such a, a collection you know, even, even exactly the film and so on that you know Moving, moving for history pictures. buffs, it's it's like a Christmas every yeah, now and again. It's a gold mine. So. Yes. So I believe this is Tracy Brook. And, uh, it's about 1907. No leaves on the trees. No, it was yeah, definitely spring. Okay. And this would have been the, the tripod that yes. would, would have been on. Okay, so we continue along the wall here. Yes. So after the surveying, he had his architect Frederick Townsend uh, draw up some plans, and this is one of the plans he had. He went through many versions. Sometimes Miner himself would mark up. He would want it bigger, smaller, um, and so this is just one of them to uh, exemplify. Another wonderful uh, part of our archives is that we have uh, William Miner had all these blueprints and maps. Uh, created and saved. Okay, so now we are not talking about the million dollar dam here. We're talking about the right, McGregor, the dam, McGregor dam, dam, which is uh, near Feinberg Park. It is near Feinberg Park, and the reason we actually chose to, so although we have most of our images for um, Altona Flat Rock, because people can actually drive by the McGregor powerhouse, we decided to stick with that one. Um, they can see it from the road in Altona. Okay, now is this the one that was taken down in the last few years? Is no, this not? one is actually the one that uh, this, it's owned by the state and it is uh, uh, leased to the Turtle, Turtle Island Trust. Okay, so this is the one that Minor Lake in the back yes, controls yes. that? Yes, that's correct. Okay, uh, in the back of uh, Feinberg Park there's the Minor Lake, which uh, goes out uh, closer to uh, the military turnpike. And that is correct. Uh, so what was the dam that was by the road that got destroyed over the years? Uh, that, was, that is the LaSalle Dam. Uh, that was a smaller one, and that one was there. Uh, he wanted to recapture the water immediately from McGregor Dam, so it was so close to the powerhouse. 
Yeah, I've been talking with the, the lady who lived there, and her name is going to escape me. You must know it. Uh, Stella Mitchell? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I know. I knew you'd know. Uh, I'm talking with her. Uh, the, the views you see now when you go to that uh, McGregor powerhouse uh, was not what she saw because you had these dams there. So she saw the water. That's correct, yes. But you go there now and you see all the flat stones and the mm -hmm. water rush going right. through. Is, it's really quite a sight. It is quite a sight. But I think if, having seen that flat stone, you can see the sort of uh, hard, harsh conditions that they had to work with and you know using dynamite to be able to install the McGregor Dam and the powerhouse and the the barons that they had to work with uh, the sandstone barons and this, the hard stone. Yeah, one of the the thing that uh, ruined the efficiency of the million dollar dam was the porousness of the of the ground and they just couldn't keep the water in it. Yes, that was one of the one of the issues. So here we have, they, they started breaking uh, ground and these are all at Flat Rock. Um, you know, they had to clear the land so they piled the, the, uh, the trees just like you would, you know, maybe corn stalks or mm -hmm. um, other materials. Um, then they would lay the, they would lay dynamite and they would have uh, stone crushers and um, a, a lot, even though they did have some equipment, it, as you can see from the images, there were so many uh, men working on these projects. They actually had camps up there for the people to live, and they worked uh, year-round. And as I recall, they were kind of like what you would find if you went up to uh, uh, Lion Mountain and uh, a lot of ethnic uh, groups. And uh, each, of the, each of them kind of had their own camp based on their nationality, right? Yeah, that's correct. There were um, Italian camps, I believe an Irish camp. Um, and I, part of that may be that it, there may have been language barriers. Um, so being able to be with people you, sp you speak your, the same language is much more com comforting. And they always got along with each other, right? I think so. We've ne yeah, we, well, we, we don't really have any record of... Uh, People, you know, any, <laughs> any wars, any mass, <laughs> mass riots. So, well, uh, you know, this is uh, so you're talking the early 1900s, like your very this, first. Decade, this would have right? been yes. Uh, they started construction in March of 1911 at Altona Flat Rock, um, and it took, uh, I believe, it was 18 months to complete. Okay, so, so. this is the Flat Rock Dam. Yes. And this is Flat Rock here too. Yes, and at the very top along the tree line, it would be what is known as uh, the cement road. All right, it's a little road that drives along the top of the dam. Yeah, it goes on into yeah. the back, and, and a lot of other little places back there have a lot of colorful names. Yes. <laughs> like this, the scar pit. Or the scar pit what? was the reservoir, the name for the reservoir, because they uh, filled in the holes. Um, uh, with uh, concrete, trying to keep it from keep the water from seeping out right. from Cobblestone Hill. Right. All right. So these are some workers, and I think you'd want to eat a good breakfast if you were going to go out and do that all day. Oh, I think so. <laughs> all right, hands on. All right, more photos, and of course these are photos that uh, probably uh, 20 years ago the institute didn't know they had. Right? Some of these. I think they did know they had them. Uh, at that point, uh, but they hadn't really, they had, they were just beginning to look at them. Um, but some of these were uh, just digitized uh, before the documentary that we had uh, last year, but also for this project. Um, yeah, of course, that Paul Frederick did that, and he does such great work. Oh, yeah, he? wonderful, wonderful. So, First class. So here we have uh, stone crushers, we have cement mixers, we have the gentlemen who have to actually load again in the the, uh, the rocks into the wheelbarrow and bring them to <laughs> bring them to the uh, different machinery themselves um, they did um, have some rail tracks that they laid so that helped uh, for the larger projects okay we'll keep going uh, pretty much more of the same here Yes, and here we see some of the rail tracks that are uh, laid down um, specifically for the project and uh, along the top of the dam to bring some of the backfill 
um, and cement and whatnot into or rather along the top of the dam. So all these workers are unidentified and this could be the only photos that exist of some of these people. Quite possibly and unfortunately we don't have any records of employees so rarely we'll have someone who come in who can recognize <laughs> a relative and we get very excited. Well, well you can, they could be fibbing to you. Well, they could be. <laughs> well there's my Uncle Jake, look at that. <laughs> This, uh, it's the track along the top of the dam. Okay, so I've been right. Uh, imagine if you're going to pour cement, that's uh, you. <laughs> you needed something like that to be able to get up that high to do it. Yes, and it, you can see the carts are still hand pushed, so bringing them up was quite quite the the effort. Well, I imagine the if you look at the middle picture here, that the, something besides the manpower pulled those up. Um, up, upward, uh, whether it have been mules or horses or... Well, if you look at the very up. top image, they are actually, there's a top image is right here. That uh -huh. There's actually the gentlemen are pushing. And then maybe there were mules at the, on the other side to, to, to help you along. Yeah. Yes. Okay, now who, uh, who decided what was going to be in this exhibit? Because I'm sure you've got... Uh, Hundreds of photos you could have chose from. There are hundreds of photos. So uh, Steve Fassett, who's uh, the director of physical plant, he's been very involved in the exhibit before I was here, um, as well as uh, Rachel Dutill and myself were the primary ones who chose the images and uh, pulled it together. Okay. So here's again that million dollar dam being constructed. Uh, uh, judging from you saying it's the flat rock dam, you guys don't use that terminology, the million dollar dam. <laughs> we do use that. We do use that terminology. Uh, there, there's some question as to whether McGregor Dam actually costs more, uh, but it was certainly it certainly did cost a million dollars to build in 1911. And when was the McGregor Dam constructed? 1922. Okay, again, these here are all from the Flat Rock Dam. That's correct. And down here we see they had a crane uh, to, or some sort of pulley system to bring other, I think it was probably rocks into there along the top of the dam. Oh, so that wasn't to hang their laundry? No, probably not. Oh, okay. Construction? So we have a little bit more construction here, and the gentlemen are uh, backfilling in the dam along the top. Are there, are there records of just how much material cement concrete was used? Or is that there, just there may be. Uh, I don't know them off the top of my what? head, but uh, <laughs> <Really? laughs> there, was, there, there, there may have been, and it's possible that you know, we don't have them anymore, but I would say, knowing William Miner, somewhere at some point there were records of what he, what yes, he used. He kept, yeah. Yes. Rachel probably knows what she yeah. <laughs> All right, here's some more with that, uh, you know, just building that... Uh, that hoist there, just uh, mm -hmm. amazing the engineering. And, yeah, and just think of the, the work that went into installing the equipment to do these projects, but yet they still have all these men working on the projects. We think a majority of the minor employees were actually working on the, the hydroelectric projects. Well, I would imagine that. Yeah, with the number of projects and the size of these projects. and um, Okay, so when you gave that 800 employees figure it wasn't working on the farm. Right, that's right, correct. That was the figure you said, 800. 800 right? is correct, yes. Yeah, I was listening to that. <laughs> All right, and look at this. Uh, and another crane type. Steam powered, I'm yeah, sure. Yeah, I think like so, that. yes. Um, and we don't really have a lot of information about this, but we have quite a few images of it, and it's, it's very interesting, and it's on a bit of a track, as you can see. Um, picking up, uh, we think maybe uh, the parts of the the dam rather than actually the rocks, or um, to hoist them up to the side of the dam, perhaps. 
given type of claws that it, that it has. Yeah. And a view of some of the uh, workers mm -hmm. and the dam is starting to take shape here. It is. Yeah, every once in a while you'll see a, on eBay you'll see an old minor calendar for sale. And <laughs> this is a minor calendar from August 1917. I assume you guys have the complete collections. Uh, I would think we, yeah, I would say we probably have the complete collection. <laughs> so, and it shows some of the hydro projects that would have, or sorry, um, yeah, well, in hydro project, uh, Flat Rock, but also some of the powerhouses, uh, the Village One, um, out the Altona Flat Rock One, and uh, Lake Alice. Um, or no, I guess it's the, the Village One. Um, two views of, of Flat Rock. Yeah, see? Uh, start, uh, starting right here, we're in the, the village right The here. village, and we have an, uh, an image of it empty, which I think most people probably haven't seen, and then we... Oh, show. this is near the area where Riverside Insurance is? Yes. And then yeah, we, and empty, yeah. Yeah, empty, and you can see the gentleman below, so it gives you a bit of a scale as to the, the depth of, of, <laughs> of it. And, of course, having it full... Uh, any idea the date? Uh, this was um, 1909. 1909. <clears throat> One of the nice interviews we did was uh, many years ago was with the McQuinnies, and they talked about when the uh, underpass was put in for the railroad, mm -hmm. and uh, you know how uh, it wasn't called Route Nine at the time; it was just the state road. But that road drove right through there, so they had to keep it going so on both sides they you know that's why you've got those two little streets off to the side of the right. underpass because they kept traffic going mm -hmm. through there while they built that underpass and this here would be long before that underpass was built yes and this one here in the bottom and that is lake alice and um, i think fairly well known for anyone driving down ridge road <laughs> um, you can see it right there um right there on the little bridge so and that was 1907, and it was one of his first uh, hydro projects, or I would say the first hydro projects that he did. Now, oh, was he making electricity here? You think? You're thinking? Um, not at this particular one, but just downstream from it, before the village, he had a small powerhouse. Okay, and that's just on Tracy Brook. Yes. All right, and here's the. Uh... <laughs> a man uh, on top standing. of of uh the flat rock dam uh it it just it shows the scale of this 30 foot high dam with a you know maybe a six foot gentleman at the top of it amazing and again mm -hmm. and a few more images of the flat rock dam uh, still looks fairly similar to what it would look today Yeah, considering it's 100 mm -hmm. years old, it's held yes. up real good. And here's one where I don't think anyone these days have seen is when Flat Rock Dam is actually full. Full um, of the water. And yeah. it was full uh, by 1915. It was full and they were using it. Do you recall off the top of your head when they abandoned it? Um, I believe it was <coughs> about 1922. They had problems with the generator in the powerhouse, which was the actual uh, final uh, blow to the project and, and then of course we have a little cell dam which is uh, a w one one of the smaller ones uh, smaller slightly smaller than uh, McGregor uh, it was about 200 feet long and 30 feet I believe or 40 feet tall and that was in 1923 it was constructed yep. says it right on there I can see it yes <laughs> And uh, that was taken down a few years ago because it was, at this point in time, causing more problems. It would uh, catch the water, then let it loose. And it, like yeah, that. I think debris was catching on it, so they decided to remove the, it. Yeah, the last time that Devil's Den Road got washed out, I think, was after that. Was yeah. when they yes. Lost a couple uh, folks lost their lives. And yes, and the washout of Devil's Den, and so I think that's when the decision mm -hmm. was made. 
So was this at this point in time owned by the uh, town of Altona, or who who uh, owns that McGregor uh, right now? Uh, the town of Altona owns the powerhouse and the Feinberg Park area. Uh, and again, uh, Turtle Island Trust owns the dam yeah, itself. Down, yeah, right. Yes, downstream or upstream, I should have. Sorry. Okay, these are big insulators here. What is this all about? Yeah. So. What's a hydroelectric project without trying to show some of the primitive electricity that was on the farm? Um, and Steve has said actually found these bushings uh, in one of our buildings. <laughs> and, of course, we have to put them on display because well, yeah, they're quite fascinating. They are. Um, and, you know, in the middle we see there's a switch from one of our pump houses. Um, and we like to point out just how primitive it was and your hair probably stood on end when you were pulling <laughs> that's pushing that switch up to connect electricity you had to watch your step yes <laughs> so all this power was coming through here and being sent out throughout the farm it's out to the farm uh later on when the school was built they he also provided electricity to the school uh, as well as to the churches in chazy and um he like the streets of Shazy, uh, there are street lights. Yeah, I believe from Gray Gables across to the school, there's uh, places for pipes and, mm -hmm. and electric That's electricity correct. and so on. A little tunnel there that you can't actually walk through, from what I've been told, but you you could get down there and do some work. That's correct. So all this was hidden away here. <laughs> yes, this was actually in um, one of our pump houses. Uh, and so we thought, what better way to showcase it, electricity than to, to bring it in here and let our visitor, visitors see it. We got a little generator here. Does that work? Uh, <laughs> well, let's not try it. <laughs> I want to hear you see you hit that switch. <laughs> That's why my hair is so curly. <laughs> uh, All right. This is great. So this again. Uh, we're doing this on uh, October 25th, 2017, but this exhibit will be here. This, the whole museum will be here, but this exhibit will still be here certainly in 2018 and possibly beyond there. That's correct. So all folks can get a chance to see it. And uh, from May through October, what are the hours that you can come in? 9 to 9 a.m. to 3 p.m., uh, Monday through Friday, and uh, keep an eye out on our website and Facebook page for occasional weekend days when we have uh, special events. Okay. And this is? So this is the McGregor uh, powerhouse uh, for the McGregor Dam. And um, again, we're displaying this one because we have a beautiful model of the McGregor hydroelectric system. Uh, because people can see this from the actual uh, the road. So we thought we would give them something that they could come here and see it and then perhaps drive by and check out the building from the road. And uh, the town of Altona opened it up for a, a weekend this summer, and there was a lot of interest in there. A lot yes. of people really enjoyed that tour. Yes, yeah, so I, I hear they had very positive reviews and many hundreds of people that went to visit. And uh, as was the case with lighthouses and other things, and uh, people lived at the lighthouses, people lived here at this powerhouse. Uh, there was a couple apartments there. There were three apartments, uh, or three levels for apartments on the upper levels, and they would live there with their families um, because it was a 24-hour-a-day, seven-day-a-week yeah. job. Someone always had to be there to man, man it. Okay, so building with a purpose. Uh, oh, 1916 calendar. <laughs> These are in good shape. Now, I assume this is a, a, These a are, scan of the nut. It's not the real calendar. It's not right? the real one. Yeah. They're reproductions. Right. Um, but yes, so that is uh, one of the calendars uh, with the um, Altona Flat Rock Powerhouse. Wow. And they're in the corner and the the uh, turbines and uh, there's a pen stock in the upper right hand corner yeah. and you see where that some you know some of that went through there down near the 
the Joe Wood Road and two there, just yes. amazing. All right, so here is. This is uh, with the LaSalle Dam in the front and the McGregor Powerhouse in the background. Um, you can see just to the left of the powerhouse, it w was known as the surge tank. Um, and that was to uh, help create some water pressure, but also as a uh, protection for the hydraulic shock if the water was coming down too fast when the gate was open and closed. And that would protect the uh, generators and the turbines inside the powerhouse from damage. Um, and you can also see some of the 16 miles of trans transmissions transmission line, uh, electrical lines on the far left. Okay, yeah, the old there. Yes. I have to ask, who are McGregor and who are LaSalle? Uh, good questions. Well, McGregor, um, as far as I know, it was named after McGregor Pond. It, that was, the Minor Lake was called McGregor Pond beforehand. Um, I'm not sure who, if it was, I'm assuming it was named after a, a family or someone that lived nearby there. The LaSalle Dam, I know, was for the LaSalle uh, Mill that was nearby. Okay, I'll have to check some old, yes. old maps and see if there's some LaSalle's or McGregor's in that area. All right, so it's there's your... Surge tank and the 72-inch, six-foot Benstock, so... <laughs> six feet? Yes. Wow. You could, you could stand up in there with no problem. I, yeah, I could. Stretch my arms out a little too. All right, and right here. This is the LaSalle powerhouse. Uh, it's on private property, and it uh, um, doesn't quite look like that today, but it, it's beautiful and very similar uh, Spanish mi mission style as the McGregor powerhouse. Yeah, he built the school in that uh, type of a he did. thought process. He, he, you know, this most people would cut corners and just make it a functional powerhouse, exactly. but not, not he, William H. Minor. Yeah, he wanted these big, massive, beautiful built buildings, um, and you know, but this one it was tucked away in the woods, um, but that didn't matter. He wanted it to, he wanted it not just functional but beautiful. Okay. And this is from the, I believe, the uh, Tracy Brook Powerhouse, uh, which would have been a, the lake, one of the Lake Alice ones. Um, earlier project, I believe 1907. So there are only two turbines in that one. And you can see where the penstock um, comes into the building. And then this, uh, in the middle image, is one of the uh, electrical buildings and some of the, all the wall full of uh, equipment and the, the different uh, measurement, measurement <laughs> instruments. And looks a little bit like a, a plane with all the different buttons. And I believe this one was the village powerhouse. Wow. Now that's, uh, there's some buildings that still stand up by the other side of Stewart's and through there that you Kind of yeah, and those still stay, and those are, um, and the they are owned by the town of uh, Shazy now. No. Now this one here on the bottom is the uh, Shazy, <laughs> or sorry, um, the Tracy Brook powerhouse that I had mentioned earlier, and it's interesting. It's a little bit of a different style to it, um, but this would have been downstream from the gatehouse that in the dam that is uh, next to Ridge Road. Okay, would well that be more uh, toward, uh, towards, toward the towards, Yes, towards the road. Yes. On the Dupree, uh, what was it called? The uh, road? Yes, that's correct. Well, it was called the Bugby Road when I first uh, <laughs> got familiar with it. And so yes. Close to where the uh, hockey rink and Woodman Lodge are in that area. That's closer to there with the wildlife preserve. That's correct. Yes, and it's not there anymore, of course. Now, there's still some buildings that look like uh, minor buildings out to... Uh, uh, as you go down the, and on the Lakeshore Road, uh, there's some old buildings down there that look like that, and I know it's an area called Suckertown. Yes, and there were, he had a dam um, down that way called Fordham Mill Dam um, that is on 
Rovers land today. And then he also had the two pump houses that you can see on either side of Lakeshore Road, a pump house, a spring house. And he actually, when the, if the uh, fields were dry, he could actually draw some water from the lake um, and irrigate. yeah, irrigate the fields. I don't know how often he needed to do it, <laughs> but he had that option. He was a man ahead of his time, wasn't he? He definitely. Okay, I've got my drone out now, and I'm hovering over here. Uh, what am I looking at with my drone? Uh, this is a beautiful model of the McGregor hydroelectric system uh, in Altona. Now, did Rachel do this? She did. <laughs> she she helped out with it. Uh, but we had a company, we contracted out with a company in California to construct this with us. Um, we have the original blueprints and then between that with some drone images, as you mentioned, um, and uh, photos, we were able to get a very, very close uh, replica of it. Okay, so this is the LaSalle here in the front? That is the LaSalle here in the front, and um, so we, that's where we decided to end it with, but you can't, um, you can't tell the story about McGregor without having the LaSalle there in the front. Um, and so then, again, this is the view if you were on the Devil's Den Road looking, correct. looking toward and, the... And the LaSalle Dam is no longer there. Right. Um, and so then you would see the McGregor powerhouse, uh, this huge Spanish mission-style building <laughs> right over the river um, with the lower levels for uh, uh, flood waters. A minor thought of everything. Um, and then we had the main level with it was the machine floor, which would have the turbines and the generators and the oh, upper. Okay, we can even yeah. see you in the side here. Yes, look at that. And then the upper levels were the apartments for the employees and their family. That, up, that highest apartment is kind of small, so probably the single guys were just like that. Yeah, or, yeah, perhaps a couple without children. Yeah. Um, so then um, just behind it, we have the really tall structure was the surge tank. And that was um, to, in addition to holding a reserve of water, um, the 124 foot uh, tower also um, had a, uh, a portion of it reserved for the water hammer so that if there was too much water coming down when the gates were open, uh, it would not damage the equipment inside the powerhouse. A lot of this uh, cement is still there that we see between there and the, yes, and and the powerhouse. The cement that you see there was uh, what held that long uh, pipe that was approximately one mile of pipe um, called a penstock, and it was used to carry the water to the powerhouse. Yeah, you need the force to. Yes, and it went down a 115 foot elevation drop from the dam. So you have to picture a huge garden hose. Yeah. Yes. A, a, a six foot <laughs> and six foot diameter water hose. <laughs> that must have had some pressure. Yes. <laughs> Obviously, to turn those turbines. And, you know. Yes. Okay, so this is. Oh, well, even though they even got some flat rock looking stuff here, they did a nice job. And they did, and we really wanted it to, to be as realistic as we we could um on a you know obviously on a smaller scale things are pushed together um but it was a, a 1500 foot long dam um and on either side which are not represented in this there were um wings of earth um and concrete um which added another 1800 feet to the dam so this is the mcgregor dam yeah. this is the mcgregor dam um mm -hmm. holding down holding back uh, minor lake Mm -hmm. All right. Now I see some uh, buttons here. Yes, and the buttons, um, eat, when you push a button, it'll describe a little more detail um, of what I just talked about. Oh, so some of your little... Yeah, so it's great for self-guided. They can learn. It's here to teach them a little bit about this hydro system in particular, but also hydro systems in general. Okay, I've been saying LaSalle, but it's LaSalle Dam, huh? Yeah, there's different spellings. Sometimes I see it with the uh, 
with an E at the end. Sometimes I see it without the E. Uh, but, and again, I think I do also see it within, with S-A-L-L as well. Yeah. So. That's how um, I, I picture the name LaSalle being right. spelled. But as we know from people who do genealogy, there's a whole lot of ways mm -hmm. to spell names. Even Bedard gets spelt Bedore once in a while. Mm, that's it? true. <laughs> <laughs> okay, this is a quite an exhibit here, and if you're watching this and it's after uh, October 28th, 2017, well, wait till May before you come back here. But it's just some place, and uh, people can bring the the kids if you, you don't. Absolutely, bring your kids and come for a visit. It's free, open to the public. Okay. We are wrapping up this very interesting visit. And here we've got some modes of transportation, the most of which aren't utilized on a regular basis by anyone. We've been chatting with uh, Amy Bedard, and for a while, even Rachel Dutail <laughs> said a few words. <laughs> but she kept grabbing my mic, so I stopped letting her talk. So sorry, <laughs> Rachel. <laughs> All right, what are we looking at here? Let's start with the immediately to Judy's left. Sure, so we have uh, what is, uh, we call it the uh, station wagon because it was used to pick up people when they were coming in from the train station. And there would be a driver in the front and the people in the back uh, would ride in the back, I should say. That was horse pulled. Horse pulled, yes. <laughs> a miniature stagecoach. <laughs> yes. All right, and next to it? Uh, so then next to it, we would have had a vehicle that probably would have brought uh, Alice around. Again, there would have been a driver um, for that one with her and maybe her sisters riding in the back. <laughs> with the big fur coats on. Yes, mm -hmm. <laughs> yes. And now, is this an actual Shazy Central Rural School bus, number six? Oh, it is. It is an actual school bus and... Um, very popular with our visitors. Once they see that, they usually make a beeline to go check it out. Um, there, there's a platform around the back of it so they can get up close and personal and see how the students would sit in the school bus and see um, how it was heated. And well. but If you come to this part of the exhibit, please do not <laughs> jump inside the vehicles, right? Because right. they're old and fragile. Yes. I know, I know what being old and fragile <laughs> is all about, so. <laughs> These are even older than I am. <laughs> so that's an actual uh, bus. Now that I see, it looks like some, uh, some type of a, is that a heater or what is that pipe? It was a uh, coal heater, so that would be how they would keep it warm. So you can imagine the bus driver must have been very warm, and <laughs> the students would have been much colder, especially the students who were towards the back end. But uh, back in the you know. 1916 and so on, that era, in the next few years after that, there weren't too many kids that were getting rides to their rural school. They had to, they literally had to walk uphill both ways, right? Right. <laughs> well, and, you know, William Minor thought of everything. He constructed this school, but he knew that just because you have the school, it's further from their home, so he wanted to be able to pick up as many of those kids as possible and bring them to the school. Now, this, that one there was horse-drawn, but uh, they did have some motorized ones, if you look at some of those old yes. films. Yes, he had motorized ones later on. And they can switch out the skis. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. You pull it like a sled. Dude. That's right. There was no missing school for too much now. <laughs> Amazing. Mm -hmm. And here we have a, a sled. Yes, we have William Miner's sled that has his monogram on the side of it, and that one also would have had a driver, and they would have put on their heavy furs on their lap, and they would have went through uh, Woodside Drive and different different woods in the area. Go for a sleigh ride together, huh? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and what's this? This big tanker is uh, a sprinkler wagon and it was actually used to sprinkle the roads down and keep the dust from picking up and um, you know unpaved roads very dusty in the summer it's a very solid very solid <laughs> it's an amazing piece of shape. equipment yes so this is something else that was originally part of the farm. Originally part of the farm, and it actually says it right on the back. 
Just because it says Hearts Delight doesn't mean it was there a hundred years ago. Hearts Delight Farm, Minor Institute, Shazy, New York. See, the Institute part wasn't on there. That's right. <laughs> so that's just amazing that that wasn't uh, turned into scrap iron. Yeah, we're very fortunate to still have that around. Well, ladies, is there anything else that uh, we should touch on while we're here? I think that's it. We okay. encourage uh, the public to come and visit us. Uh, as you mentioned, we will be open this Saturday, October 28th, uh, noon to 4. That's right. And um, the exhibit closes for the season October 31st. Um, Halloween? Yes. So Monday and Tuesday, if you can't make it Saturday, you can come on Monday and Tuesday. Uh, if you don't make it this year, that's okay. We'll open up again uh, May 1st, and we'll be open again through the end of October. Okay. So you guys have nothing to do between now and uh, May 1st? Is that it? You're taking <laughs> that's right. That's <laughs> it. That's right. <laughs> Well, thank you very much. Thank you very thank much. You. you. have nothing else to add, eh, Bridget? I'm, I'm good. Amy has done a wonderful job. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, thank you very much, both of you, for taking time off on your, on your busy day because uh, I'm sure you guys have a lot to do every day of the week, so I appreciate this. And uh, thank you, Judy, for running that camera. You're watching viewer-supported viewer local television, hometown cable. And we thank you for watching. <laughs>